Hey, good morning, FCF. I, I thought yesterday was the end of the week, but I was wrong. So we're going to pick right back up where we left off in 1 Peter chapter 2. And today we're going to read verses 6 through 8. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and a precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone and a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. All right, we have a lot of Old Testament references here, and uh, it's looking back to those prophecies of the Messiah, the predictions in the Old Testament of the Messiah, and it's showing how that even the rejection of the Messiah by the Jews of his generation was foreseen by God and literally predicted uh, in, in the Old Testament. The first reference there we have, you know, I lay in Zion a, a, a chosen and a precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. It, it's a reference back to Isaiah 28, 16. And then in verse 7, it says, uh, Now to you who believe or trust, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe or trust, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The, this is looking to Psalm 118, verse 22. So there's a lot of Old Testament references here, but the idea is just this prediction that the Jews, and why did they reject the Messiah, the stone? Because they had so tired of being oppressed by Gentile powers. I mean, if you study carefully the history of the Jewish people, you know, God sets them free, creates them as a free nation, but then because of their disobedience, their repeated disobedience, their, their incorrigible disobedience, He allows them to be overthrown by one Gentile power after another. For example, in 722 B.C., the first Gentile power, because of their disobedience, the Assyrians overthrows them. Then in 586 B.C., the Babylonians overthrow them for 70 years. After the Babylonians came the Persians who overruled them and oppressed them. After the Persians came the Greeks. After the Greeks came New Testament times, the Romans. So by the time Jesus arrived, they had, they had created this picture of a Messiah who would be a political military figure. He would rescue them from their political bondage, from their, their financial bondage, uh, their class status bondage, as opposed to uh, a Messiah that was going to save us from our deepest need, which is to be saved from sin, which was authentically destroying us from the inside all the way to the outside. So these Old Testament passages are just showing God's foreknowledge, His prediction of these things, but they're assuring the New Testament believers in Peter's day who were being once again persecuted by Nero. It was assuring them their Messiah, their Lord was rejected, but God already predicted that would happen so that He is the Messiah and that if they too are experiencing rejection, that, that that's a good company to be in is essentially what it's teaching. Um, and he says that, you know, the ones that rejected the Messiah are in essence the same kinds of people that disobey the message about Christ today. They, they are disinterested in it. They disregard it because they have a distrust for God ultimately. So, uh, I hope that some of these Old Testament references might make a little bit more sense to you. And we'll pick up tomorrow in chapter 2, verse 9. See you tomorrow.